this here, right? This A, B, C is always optional. Same thing here. Config files are totally optional. If you really wanted to, you could hard code all the A's and the B's and the C's right inside of your assembly. But then, of course, you lose flexibility. Is that if you do want to change the binding later on, you got to go recompile and redeploy your software. So typically, config files are going to be preferred. So let's talk about the idea of working with building contracts, right? And then I'll show you a demo that kind of shows something happening. Very, very similar to when we're working with a web service or the .NET remoting layer. When you are building your WCF services, we're going to have a whole bunch of different attributes that can be used by the runtime engine to figure out how to marshal your data. Right? So imagine I built a brand new .NET DLL. And inside of the DLL, I created a single interface type. The only difference is I've applied service contract on the interface. And that basically says, I am WCF aware. Right? For each member of the interface that I want to expose to my external callers, I have to make them part of the operational contract. Right? Now notice this final guy in the bottom, the multiply method. He is using a custom class called MathArcs. Well, this gives me a chance to build something called a data contract. Right? And this will let me basically say, I have custom data types that are well beyond the basic simple data types that you could expose, ints, booleans, strings. And I'm going to apply the data contract and data member attributes so that the, again, the runtime can correctly marshal this stuff to the caller. Now again, the really cool part here is when you're building up these contracts, you don't have to care about which binding is used in the background. Right? So you don't have to worry about saying things like, oh, geez, if they expose this thing through a web service front end, I've got to do it this way. But if it's going to be done through a TCP, I've got to do it that way. You don't have to worry about it. Okay? So imagine that I've actually implemented that interface on a class. I compile it down, and there's my DLL. Right? That's just one of three assemblies that we have to have. Now, when you guys download the slide decks, for this talk you know, later on this week, I put up a couple of charts that just kind of show you some of the binding choices we have. Pretty hard to read it because it's kind of small, but I'll just throw out the key pieces. Whenever you are trying to build a WCF service that has the widest reach as possible, multiple operating systems, multiple programming architectures, you're going to want to make sure that you stick to the uh, web service bindings. Okay, so. Even though the, the old web service project is still there in Visual Studio, if you want to kind of have that plug and play mentality, nowadays you just make a WCF service and select a web service binding. Okay? If you know that you're going to be building some kind of an inwardly facing application, and you know everyone's running .NET, and we're all a bunch of .NET programs talking to each other, well then you might prefer to use the TCP bindings, or maybe named pipes. Right? Or peer-to-peer. -peer, right? There's a P2P implementation as well. And we also, remember too, have the ability to communicate with existing COM plus objects. That works very painlessly. And we can also go ahead and hook into message queues, both public and private. Right? And all that stuff can be defined declaratively in your config file. So you don't have to worry about writing reams and reams of code. 